Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. This is an exciting day. Nellie Chaboy came to Augustana in 2012 from Mogotio, Kenya. At Augustana, she grew academically and personally, not only excelling in her coursework, but also working for admissions and instructional technology services, serving as a math and chemistry tutor, working with Dr. Stonedahl on a project about evolutionary robotics, and being a member of the track team. You can see the tech expertise emerging early on there. Uh, all her activities helped her go forward with the tools she needed to achieve her dreams of giving back to her community and spreading hope to young people in rural Africa. She graduated in 2016 with a bachelor's degree in applied mathematics and computer science, and now, as she has said, she's, quote, changing the narrative for kids who grew up in communities like hers. Nellie is an incredible representative of what we try to achieve here at Augustana. This college is committed to education with a purpose and prepares students to be global citizens and contributors to society. Nellie also represents that extra piece, the spunk and bravery that students need and that we encourage as they think about their time beyond college. The world needs Augustana graduates today more than ever and Nellie is a great example of that. Finally, I want to note the special relationship that Nellie has with former President Steve Balls and his wife Jane. They formed a close connection with Nellie during her time as a student, and that bond continues today. Steve and Jane have done a great deal personally to support her, and the college has also had the opportunity to support Nellie's company, TechLit Africa, by donating computers toward her cause. We are proud to support TechLit Africa and proud to call Nellie one of our own. And now there are much more interesting people to meet than me to speak today, so we're going to move on to that. But first, here's a video of the great moment. Moment we've all been waiting for. Let's bring out our top 10 honorees back to the stage to reveal our 2022 CNN Hero of the Year. So, since we announced the top 10 heroes, we give you the opportunity to vote for the hero who inspires you. The hero who received the most votes will be awarded an additional $100,000 to continue their life-changing work. And this year, thanks to our collaboration with the Elbe Prize Foundation, whose mission is to make good famous and ignite a global movement for change, the CNN Hero of the Year will also receive a significant unrestricted grant. And all 10 honorees will receive critical nonprofit training and ongoing support and additional funding. And now, the 2022 CNN Hero of the Year is... Nelly, Nelly Chaboy. <laughs> read and write. She has four daughters and she worked really hard to educate us. Schools in Kenya are very expensive and so people were telling her, you're so lucky you have girls. You don't have to worry about buying land for them, right? They can just get married. 
And so, but she really believed in educating us. So she would slave away. She would work really hard by the roadside. She was by the roadside for four decades. And so when she comes home, I'm four, I'm five. I see how exhausted she is. And I sing to her this song that says, my hands are so tiny, I cannot... I cannot help you, but when I grow up, I'm gonna show you the world. And then she's like, oh, you're so cute, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so right now, in front of the whole world, I have seen you, I've shown you the world, and the CNN heroes, you have made this happen. I have to. <laughs> much growing up, but I have had a lot of selfless people in my life. My mom, the most selfless person in the world, Jane and Steve. When I came to America for the first time, I was so scared. I wasn't talking, I made myself small, but you took me in as a member of your family. You took me in, you hosted me, you, you, you helped me so much. And when I started Tech Lead Africa, you were there to pick up the name. And for my lovely life partner, Tyler, I think you're the most selfless person in the world. You're the most talented software engineer, yet you left your job in Chicago and joined me in Mogotio. Life has been really hard for you in Mogotio. I see that. I see how much you, how do you work for Tech Little Africa. And for me, people think I'm selfless, but you, you don't have any connection to Mogotio. You don't have any connection to Kenya, yet you left. You left. She could build a company in a night. That's how talented Tyler is. But just left all that to come and join me in Mogotio, right? To come and, and baby, I love you. Thank you so much for supporting me. Yeah. Sounds good, okay. Oh, wow, <laughs> this, is, this is great. Thank you, thank you everybody. Uh, sure. Tyler is here, over there in the background. <laughs> What's funny is that every time uh, someone sees the two of us, they're like, did you meet at Argy? And I'm like, sadly, no. So I think we have to go to the bell tower after this to make this official. <laughs> uh, I think it's so surreal to be to be back here at Argy, and um, yesterday we were having dinner with Jane and I don't know if I can say that, I'm just gonna say it, I don't know if it's official or not, but <laughs> they, uh, they were starting a Nelly Cheboy uh, endowment fund, and, and, and I, I, think, I think all the memories came back, like, and I even asked Jane, it's like, if you, remembering like me coming here 10 years ago, did you think that we're gonna be here in 10 years? And we were just reminiscing about how it was. And to say that Agi has been transformational for me is an understatement. I I came here. I was really scared. I I was you know I did not have I did not have you know I I left home. I left my family. I left. I did not know anyone here, right? And so I had to learn a lot of things. I had to. You know, I ate fries and chicken for a whole for a whole month because I did not know the foods and and so and what happened with Argy? What happened is that I met, I I realized that wait, America is not scary because for me four four years in Argy was America. This is all I knew about America. I was like, oh, America is nice. People are friendly, like very like. I, and and I I got to and then I went to Chicago after that. But I. <laughs> <laughs> but for four years, it's like I even I came in into a cushioning, right? An environment where I came to understand myself. When I, I come from a from a culture of just I think coming from rural Kenya, especially as a woman, it's really hard to just speak up, to be brave. We are we are taught to be quiet, to wait to be invited, to not share our dreams, right? And so and so for me coming here and coming to America. That's what I thought I needed to be. I thought I needed to be quiet and just, just work really hard in school. People will notice um, 
my job. People will notice how hard I'm working, and then someone would probably give me a job or something. That's what I, I thought I needed to do when I came here. And then I met Jane and Steve, and they were just like, they're like, oh, tell, tell, tell me, how is Mogotio? How is Kenya? How is school? How is this? And then I realized, wait, I need to talk up. I need to, I represent the nation. I represent, and so I was able to grow, right? I, I went from being a very, very shy girl, uh, you know, into building a school my junior year of college. And that really just speaks to the kind of environment I had here. And, and I, that's like, I, I hold this place so dear that when you go, when you go to Mogotio, Right now, it looks like an Aggie campus. <laughs> like the computers from All In, uh, working with uh, Sean, the computers from All In are the one in Mogotio Primary, <laughs> like just the way I saw it. Um, the colors, everything is navy and gold. And, <laughs> and when my mom, my mom came on campus recently, and she was like, oh, I see where you get your yellow from, OK. <laughs> she was like, what's wrong with this girl and yellow, like yellow gold, right? And so I think, I think it's, uh, it's, really, it's really wonderful. And when I, was, when I was here today, I met two Kenyans. And, and I just I was like, oh my god, there are more Kenyans here now. So this is like, it's, it has been really amazing. And, and I, we were on campus to give, to give a lecture uh, to some of the students. And what I kept saying was, uh, know your why. And I think when I, when I look back, I'm very retrospective, when I look back at the things that, that I have done, sometimes I'm like, wait, you did that? That's crazy. I realized that I got really lucky to know my why really early on. That any moment that I got, any opportunity that I got, it was like my why. I knew that as a little kid, as that promise to my mom, as I sang to her, and I wanted to show her the world, so that even in an instant, even when all the cameras are on me, I'm able to to just like because I know it's so core cool to me that it's so natural, right? When I when I heard that they mentioned my name and I was screaming and and. Can you imagine going from that? That that moment was not orchestrated at all. It was all just it just all happened, and 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 I was screaming and I'm looking at her like, hey, mom, we've made it, and she's screaming back at me, and then she comes on stage, and even like singing that song, like none. What you saw that is that it was a manifestation of a promise from a little girl. I I kept singing to her all the time because I think what. What happened is that I, I saw her. I, I saw her as, as for who she was. She's Christina Cheboy, and she, she, she's growing up in a society where um, educating girls is not valued. She's growing up in a society that just because she's a mom now, you can't call her by a name because it's res respectful. You have to call her Mama, Mama Kosi, or you have to call her something else. And yet she's expected to show up, right, to show up for that same community that is not valuing her, right? She, she, she's working really hard every single day to, to educate her daughters. She's <laughs> raising the whole community, yet nobody knows her name, right? She's just, you know, Mama Kosi, somebody's mom, and most women most women uh, do that. Like they, in a community, that's it. You just, you become a teenage mom and that's it. That's all you do. You just, you show up for your community, you show up for your, for your kids, you show up for everybody. And, and so for me, I think even as, as a girl, if, even though I could not describe it, I saw that's what my mom was going through. And so I learned that school, even and the Kenyans recognize the song. All the Kenyans were singing along when I sang because we learned that school as a by the way. But every time I'll learn something about my mom or in school, I'll come, I'll memorize it, and I'll come do, tell, it, tell it to her. So the song is what I kept singing. Any poem that I learned about mom, I'll memorize it, and I go recite it to her at home. And so, and, and, and that song, it, it, it was a promise in it. It was like I just really believed that I could, I could, I could show her the world. I, I could not describe it as a little kid. I can't describe how I knew that. And all that I was asking myself is when. It wasn't really, and, and the when part was really crucial because she was really sick when I came to Augustana and I was so worried. I was like, I don't want my mom to die in poverty, right? I was so worried about that. And so that moment, I think that moment was a lot of things combined. In that I was able to fulfill my, um, you know, my childhood promise, like the world met her and fell in love with her. And uh, she loves glamour, so that she really loved that. And then, <laughs> and then it's like people know her. 
people know who she is and she's uh, like any woman she has ambition she you know i don't like glamour she likes glamour like we, she's just is very complex as any person and not just responsible to taking care of our society but she has her own dreams she has her own you know frustration and love and and what she likes and what she doesn't like and so i think i think when i think about that moment and i think about how it played out like that it was miraculous and i think that was the biggest the biggest i i can't even describe it was that moment was like the most wonderful thing that can ever happen in that i i could not have orchestrated that for one and two that that she was there <laughs> that she was there and she was there on cue you know she loves she loves camera she loves like she was there on cue <laughs> and so <laughs> and so i um but that you know that that i i knew my why at a very young age and 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 i have i always ask myself why i always ask myself why am i doing this why even in the simplest uh uh even right now i ask myself why did i tell that story versus that story right and and so it's a, it's a very i think it's something that i have learned and i can lend it to you it's it's a very uh very powerful tool like like why are you doing that job why did you say it the way you said why are you dating this person don't ask yourself that you'll hate that one okay but <laughs> right and and i was saying this to the class and for me why i'm doing tech led africa is because i i saw poverty in my community and i saw how dehumanizing it can be and how it has been and i feel so i i see technology as such a powerful tool because right now we have kids like uh what we envision is Techland Africa we want our kids when they graduate high school they are just able to work remotely from any company in the world and the coolest part is the remotely part right because you don't have to leave your community to make it and and the internet has enabled that the computers has enabled that so we are training them how to make money online how to build a brand and we are seeing that happen one of our teacher right now is working remotely for a company in California the other ones are doing um very specific machine learning tasks for companies like Tesla so so i i just feel like 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 the things are happening things are happening and it, and it's very exciting and so and so but i still ask myself over and over again why and and that why that knowing why i do it and believing so much in why i do it has made the going a lot easier right being an entrepreneur is really hard running a nonprofit is all kind of hard but but when i remember why i'm doing it 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 makes it really easy and so as as you are thinking whatever as a student and you have challenges and you're trying to think what career should i go into or you're trying to think why am i doing this major over that major just knowing that what is something that you really care about that you like it if if you had okay we can start with this one if you had all the money in the world what would you do and i used to ask myself that if i had a million dollars which seemed like a lot of money still is which seemed like a lot of money for a college student i would ask myself what would i do and it was always like i'll donate to a company to a nonprofit that is alleviating poverty and and as i was in the corporate and uh, corporate world and i'm working as a software engineer i kept asking myself that question like if i get a raise if i have a promotion or if I, even if i stay in this truck and i became a i become like a really top executive at a company what will i do what will i do with that money with that recognition and it was always like i will donate to a company that alleviate poverty and so it just became so clear that wait go do that and then get someone to donate to you right and so and 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 really just because i kept asking that over and over again right and so um i i feel like i feel like that is has been the tool for me just asking myself why and so if you're a student and you're thinking okay what job should i go into like what what should i do what like it, you ask yourself why what do you care about what is your passion what do you really care about you ask yourself okay what if you had all the money in the world what would you do and then the reverse is also really hard if you had nothing if you had nothing at all what would you do right and if the question is the same then it's like okay go do that go do that and and also what i learned <laughs> Uh, what i learned when, I, when after i left college which i should have learned when i was in college is just how powerful the .edu email is 
I'm telling as a student, if you write an email and you say, I'm a student, uh, I want to help, I want help with this, someone will reply. Someone will reply. So I learned that. And so now I still, I, I used to use my EDU email. I don't say I'm a student, but they're supposed to elude that from my email. Um, and I'll get meetings and people will help. Um, and so as a student, you actually have a lot of cushioning. You can take a lot of risk. You can, because wait, worst case scenario, you get a degree. Right? It, it's, not, it's not that bad. And so you, as a student, you don't realize how powerful your position is until you live. I, I, don't, I, I did not realize how powerful it was. And for me, when I look back at my time at Argy, I think if I had not built Zawadi, if I had not built the school when I was a student, there was no way I could have done after. Because after you go into the corporate world, you have rent to pay, and you keep thinking, I'm only a junior you know, software engineer. Okay, I need to build up. I need to become a senior engineer. And then life gets in the way, and then you're working really hard to sustain that. There's no way I would have carved money from my really small paycheck out of college to like build a school. But because I already had a school going, uh, just so just like continuing, right, right? As I, as I, I like to say that, uh, you know, you just start, you start, and then progress is into intoxicating. It's really hard to, to start, but once you start, you can build up on that, and all you have to do is compare to an earlier version of what you did. Like, for me, it's like I had a school with four classrooms, now I have a school with seven classrooms, yay! Now the school has electricity, now the school is a four-storied community center, and so it does, I think it all comes back to like having that as a student, having that cushioning. And I was still going to classes. I had some extra income. I built a school, and then and then I go into the world. I have a little bit extra income, and I can I can contribute to the school. And I kept growing that. And I think it's simply because I started. And and this is the best time to start. I'm addressing the students um, for that. <laughs> this is. <laughs> As a student, this is a very bad to start. So if you ask yourself why, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And then how can you do that? How can you start today for what you want to do? And it's very, it's very easy to compare yourself to people, especially in the world of social media, where you think that to start a nonprofit, you need to be a CNN hero of the year. Right. It's very easy to think like, okay, when Nelly was a student, she built a school, and I'm just a student. I'm a senior. I'm graduating. What can I do? But what I've also come to learn is that how do you get inspired by your mentors and your peers without comparing yourself to them? And that is a very hard thing to do. Because sometimes you, because it's just when you compare yourself, you just get, you get really demoralized. But how do you get inspired? How do you just like, how, even sometimes I do that. I, I see my mentor and I want to compare myself to them. I'm like, no, 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 no. The goal here is to be inspired by them. Don't compare yourself to them, right? So that's, that's my biggest takeaway, is that whatever, whatever you want to do, know your why, know why you're doing it, right? And then ask yourself, how can you start? How can you start? Don't, don't think about the best case scenario. Don't think about like, what you need to do, all the kinds. If you, if you had asked me as a student what, did I, what I could do or what I would have done, I would never have thought about Techlet or what Techlet is doing now, because that is just really hard to imagine as a student. But what I cared about is fixing poverty, and therefore, how can I improve the education system in Kenya so it can teach people on uh, creative ways to make money, right? And I was like, okay, I can build a school. I can teach kids that, and I was able to grow for that. So knowing your why, just starting, and you're, when you start, you're likely to keep going because progress is intoxicating. <laughs>